from my own comfort, but uh, I'm fully comfortable with understanding Hindi. So um, just for the benefit of um, the people who are making some of those requests. Um, I'm going to ask that people post questions in the chat box. Um, and you know we are going to do our best to answer questions as we go along. And um, we'd like this to be a more interactive session um, and a discussion to the extent that that's possible. Um, and so we really want to- Ah, Mr. Ingle. Um, uh, I would like to start by um, introducing our panelists. Uh, we have Dr. Avinash D'Souza. Welcome, Dr. S D'Souza. Uh, he's a consultant psychiatrist. He's a founder trustee of the D'Souza Foundation and a visiting psychiatrist with over six special schools in Mumbai. All of our speakers have long biographies, um, so I'm not going to, uh, you know, spend a lot of time, um, you know, doing long introductions, but please do reference your work, um, you know, to the point that it's relevant for this discussion. Um, and, and give us specific examples from your experience um, where it's helpful. Um, Mrs. Uh, Fatima Rashid, welcome. Good morning, ma'am. Um, she's the head of department for counseling and research at the Universal Education Group. Uh, we have Mrs. Vijayam Karta, welcome. And she's an educational consultant and trainer and the founder, trustee, and vice chairperson of the Kerala Public School Trust. Uh, we also have um, Ms. Farida Bagasravala, uh, who is the Director of Disability at Save the Children India. Um, and when we, have, please alert me if Dr. Matthew joins um, and when the Commissioner joins and um, I will pause so that we can introduce Dr. Matthew as well as welcome the Commissioner. Um, I wanted to start uh, just by framing this discussion a little bit. Uh, the UNICEF just re you know, released a report um, a specific to South Asia yesterday, um, talking about the crisis that children in South Asia will now be facing um, due to COVID. Um, for those of you working um, with low-income communities, um, this means that uh, the 240 million or 24 crore children who are living in poverty in, in the region could increase to 36 crore in, within the next six months. Um, this means that these families will be facing food insecurity. They will be facing limited access to critical health services um, for other diseases and other illnesses aside from COVID. Uh, they will be ha facing issues like limited water and sanitation that can help prevent the spread of COVID. Uh, specifically for um, the group of children we're talking about, children with disabilities, we're, we're looking at a serious rise in, in issues of child protection, which can uh, you know, disproportionately affect children with disabilities, as we know. Um, we're looking at a massive disruption, um, as we all know, to our school system. Um, and currently the remote learning strategies or solutions, whether that be through technology, TV or radio, may not work for children with disabilities. Um, so this is the crisis that we're facing right now. Um, and I just wanted to hear as, as kind of a starting point from our panelists, um, we can start with um, Mrs. Rashid. Ma'am, um, what, what has it been like in the last six months Four or four months since the lockdown for children with disabilities. What has that experience been like? What are we really looking um, at when, when we look at welcoming them back to school? Um, what can we expect to see in our, in our children? And um, after you respond, we'd love to hear um, from the other panelists as well. Thank you, Vandana. I feel like all others, so to say, normal students. Even children with disability will have the same range of emotions, much more in the intensity and magnitude, because they are not able to express the way other children can probably. They are not taken so seriously probably. So they will be more at risk for mental health issues and psychological problems than, so to say, children without any disability. So we expect children coming with a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of uncertainty, lot of trauma effect. And uh, as we talk about the structural um, 
Ma'am, just to interrupt you, I think we're getting a few comments that you're not audible. Um, I'm just going to pause and you know turn to um, Mrs. Uh, Kartha, ma'am. Can you can you speak? And then while um, uh, ma'am, while you adjust your mic, um, we'll turn to another panel. We'll return to you. Hello. You're on mute, ma'am. So we are going through such difficult times. It's not, it is not easy and it's not going to be easy as we had already said for quite some time. Uh, so I don't have much uh, uh, experience uh, with working with uh, children with disabilities. I had all throughout worked with uh, you know, normal schools, uh, but whether it is, you know, it's for normal children or children with disabilities, I'm sure you know, it's going to be a tough time more than the children, I feel, for the parents. So they are have they are, they have to take care of their own uh, financial other uh, part of life. Plus, they have to take care of their children when they get back to the school. So uh, it's going to be very tough for the teachers. It is going to be very tough for the teachers because they have to take more care about their uh, children's uh, emotional well-being. So that is one thing which we see, and I hope our teachers during this lockdown they are preparing, gearing themselves up to uh, face uh, these issues when they, uh, you know, uh, when the schools reopen. Even during or uh, during this time also, when we reach out to schools, I hope uh, you know they are uh, aware of the uh, problems which the children and parents are going through, and they are. Uh, uh, you know, taking necessary steps. Thankfully, there are enough resources available on the net for people to uh, read, understand, and you know, implement in their life what they can do. Uh, for example, starting with practices like mindfulness or helping the children uh, to take up responsibility. Or uh, there are there can be so many ways. You know, there are enough and more resources available, and I'm sure. Uh, our teachers uh, are going to be more, better prepared when the schools reopen. Thank you. I think we may just have lost Vandana, unfortunately. I'm sure she'll log in in a second. Uh, uh, but we are really fortunate to have uh, Assistant Commissioner Mr. Ingle here. Uh, Ingle sir, uh, aap, uh, please tell me that you are busy and you have to go quickly. But if you can talk about what the government thinks about the children of CWD, what do we need to do for them? And what do we need to do for them? Uh, as teachers, we need to be prepared as teachers, and we need to be prepared as teachers, and we need to be prepared as teachers. Sir, you're on mute. Commissioner Ingle, sir, you're on mute. Yes, sorry. Good morning to all of you. All of you know that the COVID-19 has spread in the whole world. और कैसे लोग फाइट कर रहे हैं क्या अलग जो डेवलप नेशन है उनके भी क्या परिस्थिति है बावजूद इसके भी उनके पास बहुत सारी मेडिकल फैसिलिटी है लेकिन वो कुछ नहीं कर पा रहे हैं उसमें मेरे ख्याल से सिंपल जो चीजें करनी चाहिए उस टाइम वो सिंपल चीजों का ही इस्तेमाल होता है अगर आपके पास बहुत टेक्नोलॉजी है कुछ भी है तो उसका इस जगह कुछ उसका इस्तेमाल नहीं हो सकता है जैसे कि अगर आपके पास वेपन्स है लेकिन इसको ऐसी चीजों को फाइट करने के लिए सिंपल अपना बिहेवियर चेंज करना पड़ता है वही अपना वेपन है तो हम इंडियन इंडिया में उसको सक्सेसफुली किया जा रहा है अभी रही बात आपने जो चिल्ड्रन से स्पेशल चिल्ड्रन हैं उनको थोड़ा ह्यूमिनिटी प्रॉब्लम्स � तो गवर्नमेंट गाइडलाइन से ही कहती है कि ज्यादा से ज्यादा जो नॉर्मल बच्चे भी हैं तो उनको होमवर्क देके उनको खुद पढ़ने के लिए इंस्पायर करना है मोटिवेट करना है और उनको जो प्रॉब्लम आते हैं वो सॉल्व करना है 
तो ये लर्निंग मेथड ऑनलाइन ऑफलाइन जो लर्निंग मेथड उन्होंने इंट्रोड्यूस किया है अभी कुछ जगह तो डिजिटल डिवाइड है इंडिया में कुछ किसके पास डिजिटल डिवाइसेस है किसके पास नहीं है तो थोड़ा मैनेज करना है हमको जैसे कि अगर डिजिटल डिवाइड नहीं तो उनको फोन करके सिंपल मैसेज दे के उनको वहाँ उनका होमवर्क दे के उनका करके लेना चाहिए और उनके प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व करना चाहिए अगर ऑनलाइन है डिवाइसेस तो उनको ऑनलाइन पढ़ाना चाहिए लेकिन उनकी मोस्ट प्रायोरिटी स्टूडेंट को देना चाहिए उनकी हेल्थ को दी गई है गवर्नमेंट ने तो ये सब चीजें है लेकिन मेरे ख्याल से अभी इसका सब पार्टिसिपेशन कैसा है उसमें क्या क्या केयरफुल केयर लेनी चाहिए उसके बारे में हमने अभी सेव द चिल्ड्रन स्कूल ने अच्छा एक स्टैंडर्ड ऑपरेटिंग प्रोसीजर तैयार किया है एसओपी तैयार किया है तो वो उसके थ्रू जाना चाहिए और मेरे ख्याल से एज असिस्टेंट कमिश्नर और गवर्नमेंट का जो नजरिया है उसमें मैंने थ्री पीज के ऊपर थोड़ा फोकस किया है जैसे की प्रिवेंशन प्रिवेंट करना चाहिए ये सब चीजों से और प्रोटेक्ट करना चाहिए बच्चों को और बाद में पार्टिसिपेट करना चाहिए पार्टिसिपेट मतलब जो बच्चों के पेरेंट्स है बच्चे हैं स्टाफ है मैनेजमेंट है ये सब लोगों ने पार्टिसिपेट करना चाहिए एक्टिवली और अवेयरनेस क्रिएट करना चाहिए इसके बारे में और ये ये जो होगा है अपना उसके थ्री पीस का लेकिन इसको इम्प्लीमेंट करने के लिए थ्री सी की जरूरत है उसमें कम्युनिकेशन कोऑर्डिनेशन और केयर कम्युनिकेशन जो है कि जैसे कि अपने पेरेंट्स है कुछ लोगों को इतना अवेयर नहीं रहते तो कम्युनिकेशन उनका इतना पावरफुल नहीं रहता है उसमें से फिर मिसअंडरस्टैंडिंग और पूरा थोड़ा प्रॉब्लम हो सकता है तो कम्युनिकेशन क्लियर होना चाहिए उसके गाइडलाइंस पूरे स्कूल ने कम्युनिकेट करना चाहिए स्टाफ को उनके और पेरेंट्स को ताकि उसका कोऑर्डिनेशन अच्छा हो सके कोऑर्डिनेशन करना प्रॉपरली और बाद में केयर लेना इसमें से केयर हेल्थ केयर है और बाकी सब कम्युनिकेशन क्लियर होना चाहिए उसके बारे में थोड़ा केयरफुल रहना चाहिए बाकी जो रूमर्स है या कुछ ऐसे चीजें है कि जो फैलाव कर सकती है तो सब लोगों को ये केयर करने के लिए बोलना है सबको एजुकेट करना है ताकि मैनेजमेंट अच्छा होने के लिए ये थ्री सी काम करेगी और पर्सनल बेसिस पे अपना प्रिवेंशन प्रोटेक्शन और ये पार्टिसिपेशन ये सब केयर करेगा और जो बच्चे हमारे स्पेशल चिल्ड्रन जो है वो अच्छी तरह से मतलब उनका जो एजुकेशन का जो ये चल रहा है प्रोसेस चल रहा है वो स्मूथली रन हो जाए और उनको कोई डिफिकल्टी नहीं आ जाए तो बस यही कहना चाहता हूँ और ज्यादा से ज्यादा सब जो लोग हैं मेडिकल फील्ड के हो या मैनेजमेंट में जो सोशल वर्क कर रहे हैं सोशल वर्क कर रहे हैं उनसे स्टैंडर्ड ऑपरेटिंग प्रोसीजर लेके उसमें थोड़ा उसको इनरिच करना चाहिए और उसको अपडेट करते रहना चाहिए गवर्नमेंट के तरफ से एक ही है कि जो बच्चे है उनकी हेल्थ बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है और इम्यूनिटी पावर उनकी बढ़ाना चाहिए उनका कॉन्फिडेंस बढ़ाना चाहिए ज्यादा से ज्यादा पेरेंट पहले ही स्पेशल चिल्ड्रन जो होते हैं उनके जो एजुकेट करने के लिए इतना स्ट्रगल करना पड़ता है उनको इतना डेडिकेशन रहता है उनका तो ये सिचुएशन में नॉर्मल सिचुएशन में उनको इतना स्ट्रगल करना पड़ता है तो ऐसे कोविड नाइन्टीन की सिचुएशन जैसी पेंडेमिक है उसमें उनका थोड़ा ज्यादा और ये लगने वाला है डेडिकेशन और थोड़ा उनको सपोर्ट करने की जरूरत है इस टाइम फाइनेंशियली भी हम उनको सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं जैसे कि स्टाफ है और उनका नॉन सैलरी देना है या कुछ एनजीओ के साथ कोऑर्डिनेट करके उनके उनके जो पेरेंट्स है उनको कुछ खाने की चीजें हो या कुछ उनको सहायता है वो हम प्रोवाइड कर रहे हैं हमारा नोडल ऑफिसर का जो मेरा रोल है वो हम कर रहे हैं और सब सेव द चिल्ड्रन जैसे स्कूल है उनकी जो संस्था है वो बहुत अच्छी तरह से काम कर रहे हैं उन्होंने एक स्टैंडर्ड ऑपरेटिंग प्रोसीजर भी तैयार किया है वो प्रोसीजर सबको मेरे ख्याल से उन्होंने शेयर करना चाहिए तो बस मैं इतना ही कहना चाहता हूँ गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से थैंक यू वेरी मच और थैंक यू फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी thank you uh, thank you sir for being here with us um i hope you can stay for some time i know you're very busy um yes. but just one question for you uh yes. you know we have many many educators with us teachers counselors school directors oh, mm -hmm. government ke sath kya coordination hone chahiye unke through to abhi school ab jab shuru hoti hai to unke sath kaise matlab community government ke sath kaise coordinate kar sakte hain ye sab schools क्या सर्विसेज गवर्नमेंट के ऊपर डिपेंड कर सकते हैं क्या अपने मतलब संस्था के ऊपर डिपेंड करने पड़ेगा या अपने स्कूल के ऊपर डिपेंड करने पड़ेगा ये थोड़ा समझा सकते हैं क्योंकि काफी सारा क्वेश्चंस है सबके मन में कि गवर्नमेंट क्या सर्विसेज देने वाले हैं क्या सपोर्ट देने वाले हैं 
और हमारे मतलब तरफ से क्या करने चाहिए तो वो थोड़ा सा सबको अगर आपके तरफ से बता सकते हैं तो वो थोड़ा सा उनके मन में क्लियर हो जाएगा गवर्नमेंट का जो सपोर्ट है वो उन्होंने गाइडलाइंस जो जारी किया है गवर्नमेंट ने जो स्कूल रन करने के लिए वो गाइडलाइंस हम सबको जो प्रिंसिपल से स्कूल्स के उनके साथ शेयर करते हैं या हमारे ग्रुप भी है उसमें सब आइडिया शेयर होता है उसका इम्प्लीमेंटेशन अच्छी तरह से होना चाहिए और कम्युनिकेशन जो स्टाफ जो पेरेंट्स है उनको अच्छी तरह से वो गाइडलाइंस बता के उसके बारे में उसके जो इम्प्लीमेंटेशन वो इफेक्टिवली करना चाहिए और उसकी केयर लेना चाहिए गवर्नमेंट का सपोर्ट तो आप जो बोल रहे हैं तो हम तो पूरा गाइडलाइंस और जो उसकी हेल्थ के लिए कहाँ का कैसे क्या करना है वो सब उसमें दिया है गाइडलाइंस में तो सब शेयर कर चुके उसको खाली इम्प्लीमेंट करना है कुछ प्रॉब्लम आ गए तो हमारा डेली कम्युनिकेशन चल रहा है और हम तो नोडल ऑफिसर है दिव्यांग बच्चों के लिए पूरे डिस्ट्रिक्ट के लिए मुंबई सिटी और मुंबई सब अर्बन के लिए और जो हमारे कमिश्नर है डिसेबिलिटी कमिश्नर उनको भी ट्विटर पे आप शेयर कर सकते हैं तो डायरेक्ट फिर जिस डिस्ट्रिक्ट का प्रॉब्लम आता है वो डिस्ट्रिक्ट को जो असिस्टेंट कमिश्नर है उनको सर्कुलेट करते हैं फिर वहां जाके हम प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व करते हैं अभी हम मुलुंड में और एक जोगेश्वरी में दो इसका दिव्यांग लोगों का ट्रीटमेंट चल रहा था कोविड का तो उनको प्रॉब्लम आ रही थी फिर वो उसने ट्वीट किया फिर मैडम ने हमको डिसेबिलिटी कमिश्नर जो मैडम है हमारे प्रेरणा देश प्रकार जी उन्होंने हमको कम्युनिकेट करके हमारा स्टाफ वहां जाके उसका प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व कर दिया तो ऐसा हमारा रोल है कि हम डायरेक्ट इंटरवेंट भी करते हैं उसमें और जो गाइडलाइन है गवर्नमेंट के वो गाइडलाइन इम्प्लीमेंट करने के लिए हम गाइड करते हैं अच्छी तरह से तो बस ये सिर्फ तो इफेक्टिव होना चाहिए इतना ही आशा है और आप गवर्नमेंट के तरफ से बोल रहे हैं तो आप क्या सपोर्ट देखने चाहते हैं स्कूल से टीचर से डायरेक्टर से जो संस्थे हैं क्या आपको क्या स, व, किस तरह का सपोर्ट की जरूरत है हमको सपोर्ट यही चाहिए कि जो स्टूडेंट और उनके जो पेरेंट्स के प्रॉब्लम्स है वो अच्छी तरह सॉल्व हो जाए और एक्टिवली उसमें पार्टिसिपेट होना चाहिए जो इंस्टीट्यूट है स्कूल से और एक अच्छा उनका जो रोल है वो थोड़ा डायनामिक रोल होना चाहिए और उन्होंने गवर्नमेंट और पेरेंट के बीच में जो कम्युनिकेशन करना चाहिए वो जो कोऑर्डिनेशन का रोल उनका जरूरी है वो नोडल एजेंसी के रूप में उन्होंने भी काम करना चाहिए दैट्स इट थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू नाउ टू लाइक टू वेलकम डॉक्टर मैथ्यू आई एम सॉरी देयर वाज अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ अ चैलेंज लेटिंग यू इनटू द रूम अम Dr. Matthew is the director of the AYJ National Institute of Speech and Hearing Disabilities. Welcome, ma'am. Um, so, um, so we've just heard from uh, Commissioner Ingle um, about what the government is doing. I think, in particular, I found you know these principles that he's outlined very interesting, right? So he's he's talked about three P's: prevention, protection, and participation. and how do we accomplish these three p's for our children we have to coordinate we have to communicate and we have to care a, a really excellent very simple structure i think sir to understand um both on the the issue side um what the priorities are um protection obviously being prevention and protection obviously being the first um and then active participation from every stakeholder being really critical um and also three very simple solutions um to think about so so actually i'd like to um you know move to the other panelists and talk about these three c's um a little bit this communication coordination and care so i think we all understand that whether it's a special needs child or quote unquote normal child returning to school um i think even we have been traumatized <laughs> over the last 4 months as adults um who have facilities who have the ability to understand the news we are also have been in our homes or have been facing whatever issues on our personal level um but for children who you know have different levels of understanding of of why this is happening why they are not going to school why they are not allowed to go outside and play with their friends um who who may be missing um caregivers who may be missing people who um give them the love and the the security that they need every day um you know what is it going to be like for them and what can we do for them um so i'd like to you know just open this up to our other panelists and ask you 
um, what in your mind are the priorities when we return to school and we're thinking about um, the priorities for our children and what schools um, need to be thinking about? Um, what in your mind are those, those key things um, for a school to take into account when planning for school reopening? Dr. D'Souza, why don't you start? Oh. जो स्पेशल बच्चे होते हैं कई बार हम जब देखते हैं तो उनको संभालना पूरा दिन घर पे मुश्किल हो जाता है तो वन ऑफ द मेजर प्रॉब्लम्स जो हमने देखा है कि पेरेंट्स मुझे फोन करते हैं कि सर पहले बच्चों का एक रूटीन था कि वो सुबह नौ बजे स्कूल जाते थे दो तीन बजे तक स्कूल में रहते थे उसके बाद घर आते थे फिर घर पे उनका एक रूटीन था बट क्या हो रहा है कि अभी घर पे रहने के कारण उनको बाहर जाने की बिल्कुल आजादी नहीं है तो जो स्विमिंग होती थी उनकी थेरेपीज होती थी उनका गार्डन में जाना होता था खेलना होता था वो बिल्कुल बंद हो गया है तो केयर में और सभी छोटे घरों में रहते हैं हर किसी के पास बड़ा कंपाउंड नहीं है हर किसी के पास बड़ा गार्डन नहीं है हर किसी के पास बड़ा बैल्कनी नहीं है जहाँ चल सके तो मूवमेंट उनका कम हो गया मेरे एरिया में दो तीन बच्चे है ऑटिज्म के जिन्हें रोज शाम को पाँच साढ़े बजे गाड़ी में ड्राइव पे जाने की आदत थी और वो एक रूटीन उनकी छूट गई थी तो उसके कारण वो वायलेंट हो गए थे एग्रेसिव हो गए थे तो मैंने उनके माँ बाप से कहा कि हम ट्राई करते हैं हम लोकल पुलिस अथॉरिटी से थोड़ा परमिशन लेते कि ये बच्चा स्पेशल है इसे सिर्फ गाड़ी में निकलने की अनुमति दीजिए गाड़ी से बाहर नहीं निकलेगा वो और गाड़ी में भी अगर आप चाहो तो मास्क वगैरह पहन के बैठेगा लेकिन सिर्फ एक घंटे के लिए उसको थोड़ा सा ड्राइव लोकल एरिया में करने दीजिए ताकि उसको हम दिखा सके कि देखो सब बंद है आप चाहो भी तो नहीं जा सकते हो या नहीं उतर सकते हो और जिस एरिया में वो जाता था जिस गार्डन में जाता था वो गार्डन भी बंद है उसको हम दिखा सके तो हमने एक लेटर दी लोकल पुलिस अथॉरिटीज के पास पेरेंट्स गए लकीली पुलिस अथॉरिटीज बहुत अच्छे थे उन्होंने इस बात को समझा उन्होंने और उन बच्चे को भी देखा उन्होंने घर पे आके और उन्होंने बोला नहीं आप ले जाइए उन्होंने लेटर दी परमिशन की उन्होंने बोला आप गाड़ी में बैठ के ले जाए कोई आपको रोकेगा तो आप ये हमारा लेटर दिखा दीजिए कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं होगा तो उनके लोकल एरिया में बच्चे को घुमाते थे तो वो जब गार्डन की जिद करता था उसको गार्डन ले गए गार्डन दिखाया कि कोई नहीं है गार्डन बंद है तो इन अराउंड थ्री फोर डेज टाइम तीन चार दिन में बच्चा समझ गया कि आ, आ, उसको जो है प्रॉब्लम कि अभी बाहर नहीं जा सकते वो एक चीज था दूसरी चीज ये था कि बच्चे कई बार जिद करते हैं कि उनको ये चाहिए या वो चाहिए और उनका एक रूटीन जो था बदल गया तो मैंने सभी स्पेशल बच्चों के माँ बाप से कहा जो कम्युनिकेशन वाली बिट है केयर तो सभी घर पे करते हैं लेकिन जो कम्युनिकेशन वाली बिट है जैसे हम आज जूम मीटिंग कर रहे हैं मैंने माँ बाप से रिक्वेस्ट की कि उनके स्पेशल एजुकेटर्स से उनकी जूम पे बात करवाई है क्योंकि कई बार क्या है स्पेशल बच्चे शायद माँ बाप की इतना नहीं सुने लेकिन अपने क्लास टीचर की जरूर सुनते हैं तो मैंने बोला कि क्लास टीचर से जरा उनकी बात करवाइए कि देखो बेटा ऐसा है आप बाहर नहीं निकल सकते हो नहीं जा सकते हो मैं भी घर पे हूँ मैं भी स्कूल नहीं जा रही हूँ क्योंकि कई स्पेशल बच्चों के मन में है क्या मुझे स्कूल जाने से रोका जा रहा है और बाकी सब लोग जा रहे हैं तो उसके कारण भी उनके मन में ये बातें आ गई तो उनको थोड़ा टीचर से उनकी बात करवाई तो ऑटोमेटिकली uh, टीचर ने uh, जब सभी बच्चों से बात की और मैंने कहा उनको दूसरे बच्चों से भी मिलाइए जूम पे ताकि वो देखे कि मेरे क्लास के दूसरे बच्चे भी अपने अपने घर में हैं तो एक तरह का उनमें एक कम्युनिकेशन रोज का एक वन आवर का कम्युनिकेशन होता था हम उनको पढ़ाते नहीं थे टीचिंग नहीं हो रहा था लेकिन कम्युनिकेशन होता था कि टीचर से टच में थे प्रिंसिपल से टच में थे अपने क्लास के दूसरे बच्चों के साथ टच में थे एक जूम मीटिंग द्वारा तो दे ऑल गॉट यूज टू दैट फैक्ट कि यस हम थोड़े समय के लिए ही मिलेंगे और जो तीसरी चीज ये है कि जो कोविड एज एन इलनेस स्पेशल बच्चों में इम्यूनिटी कम है सो द रिस्क ऑफ देम गेटिंग दिस इलनेस इज फार मोर सो दे लॉट मोर केयर दैट हैज टू बी टेकन और सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग वगैरह हमारे बच्चे शायद इतनी अच्छी तरह से नहीं समझ पाए तो उसके कारण बहुत मुश्किल होगा उनको बाहर ले जाना और री इंटीग्रेट करना इवन वेन यू ब्रिंग दम बैक टू स्कूल मे बी आफ्टर अ फ्यू मंथस इफ सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग नॉर्म्स हैव टू बी फॉलोड इट मे बी वेरी डिफिकल्ट विथ स्पेशल चिल्ड्रन बिकॉज इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू गेट दम स्टैंड Uh, a feet away from each other it's very difficult to get them sit away from each other in fact they would want to sit close to each other rather than sit away from each other to apne dosto ke sath baithna chahenge to unko aur wohi unka support hai 
वही एक उनका सपोर्ट है और एंड स्पेशली नाउ इफ यू आर डीलिंग विद चिल्ड्रेन जो इयरिंग इम्पेयर है या विजुअली इम्पेयर है तो उनको तो आपको पास ही पे थाना है आप कैसे सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग करोगे दीज आर प्रैक्टिकल प्रॉब्लम जो स्कूल फेस करने वाली है एक बार स्कूल uh, खुलेगी और uh, कई ऑटिज्म के बच्चे है जो uh, एक फिक्स रूटीन फॉलो करते हैं तो इफ यू ट्राई टू शिफ्ट दे सीट और शिफ्ट दम अवे वो खुश नहीं होंगे अगर आप उनसे कहेंगे कि नहीं यहाँ नहीं वहां बैठना है वो खुश नहीं होंगे तो ये प्रैक्टिकल प्रॉब्लम हर बच्चे के लिए अलग होगा और इंडिविजुअल होगा जैसे स्कूल खुलेगा एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दी एस ओ पीज विच आर देर आई थिंक आपको ये प्रॉब्लम इंडिविजुअली हर बच्चे के माइंड सेट और बिहेवियर इंटेलिजेंस लेवल को मद्देनजर रखते हुए डील करना पड़ेगा दैट्स ऑल आई वॉन्ट टू से थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर या यू टच ऑन मेनी इम्पोर्टेंट पॉइंट्स बहुत सारे इश्यूज पे टच किया है आपने एक तो मेरे को वो पेरेंट्स और कम्युनिटी का रोल जो आप बोल रहे हैं आई सी मैम जस्ट वन सेकेंड आई सी मिस रशीद जस्ट वन मिनट कम टू यू नेक्स्ट वो पेरेंट और कम्युनिटी का रोल जो आप बोल रहे हैं काफी इम्पोर्टेंट है अभी आई थिंक जिनके बच्चे हैं हम लोग सब अपने स्कूल्स को याद कर रहे हैं सब अपने टीचर्स को याद कर रहे हैं और जो पेरेंटल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है वो काफी भर गया है तो आई वॉन्ट अ टॉक अ लिटल बिट अबाउट दैट रोल विथ ऑल ऑफ यू द रोल ऑफ आर पेरेंट्स इन द रोल ऑफ आर कम्युनिटीज इन सपोर्टिंग आर चिल्ड्रन बिकॉज लाइक यू डॉक्टर डिसूजा टच ऑन there is many things that we're asking them to do uh ya wo um permission lene padega wo drive pe jaane ke liye ya bahar leke jaane ke liye ya ye zoom call ko arrange karne ke liye ya jo bhi hai wo parent responsibility ab ho gaya wo aur parent aur school ke connection bahut zaruri hai wo uske liye to ye ho sakta hai ki pehle matlab covid ke pehle itna connection itna acha nahi tha to kaise hai matlab agar ye sab educators hai hamare sath to क्या सोल्यूशन दे सकते हैं उनको कि कैसे वो रिलेशनशिप को कैसे सपोर्ट किया जाएगा मिस रशीद प्लीज गो एन यूर ऑन म्यूट मैम म्यूट म्यूट यस इट्स फाइन ना सो यू नो i completely agree with what uh, avinash has just shared with us we are talking about special needs children but i am also including other children i mean all children all parents all teachers we all are going through a lot of stress and trauma so what we have done in our schools is we have started like you know the schools are focusing more on academic online teaching whereas i feel the need is for us as educators and also for parents to prepare how to bring these children back to school so we are not doing anything in that direction so the counseling facilities online counseling facilities should be available to parents all parents in general and particularly to parents with special needs children a message should go from the school set up saying that you know these facilities are available if you are going through any stress any anxiety or any particular problem and if you want to speak to our remedial teachers and counselors please call school office and arrange a zoom meeting or something where the remedial teachers and counselors are available to solve that problem or pacify or like you know provide a listening ear to these parents those who are going through a lot of stress and trauma that's one thing and as we are focusing on academic teaching online my remedial teachers are continuously doing online teaching for our special needs children also daily one hour because when they see the familiar face and when you are you know, no keep doing what you were doing with these children they feel a sense of belonging and the connectivity which assures them it which calms them down which gives them some peace so i think schools should play this role don't focus only on academic teaching please that's not important agar bacche ko panch ka table nahi aayega is saal ya 10 ka table nahi aayega ya ek theorem nahi karega no sky will fall we need to prepare ourselves for what do we expect when children come here so a lot of teacher training is needed mr ingle also spoke about enrichment program for teachers how are we preparing our teachers are we giving them some sensitivity training some training on empathy some basic training on listening and that is a secondary thing first are we listening to our teachers what they are going through because if they are not calm and they are not stress free how would they listen and how would they empathize with children coming to them so we have to this is the time it's it's a time of course we are talking about covid 19 
नाइनटीन बट दिस इज द टाइम वी शुड ऑल्सो टॉक अबाउट द मेंटल हेल्थ पेनाडीमिक it's going to come in a big way and we have to prepare lot of people in listening in empathizing in a sensitivity training it's almost like you know how the barefoot doctors ko prepare karte the aise ek large scale pe humko ek pura army taiyar karna hai jo sensitize karo unko with empathy with sensitivity with listening skills so when they come back at least we are able to specify them take care of their social emotional well being and take care of his uh, spoken about care communication collaboration this part i mean it's fantastic guidelines are available for the from the government but we have to put it in practice with our teachers so we prepare ourselves uh, we have to focus more on preparedness how to welcome them back and 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 the area should be social and emotional well being of children and not academics at this point of time at least also thank you yeah I think you've touched on many things also. So we've talked about the importance of teacher well-being, teacher mental health, um, but we've also talked about teacher education, teacher training, um, and uh, I'd, I'd like to ask all of the panelists also if you have any resources with specific strategies or specific plans or ideas for teachers, for schools that you have access to that are online. If you can post them in the chat box. then people can use those as a resource um when they leave this conversation and have something to take away with them but uh, i just want to go back to a few of the things ma'am that you touched on teacher well-being and teacher education um focusing on the socio emotional well-being you know hum log abhi sab log wo ye bol rahe hain na ki wo social socio emotional well-being bahut important hai par jab school shuru hoti hai aur fir wo wapas se wo exam ka pressure hota hai ya बोर्ड एग्जाम शुरू हो जाएंगे या ये सब प्रेशर आ जाएगा कि सिलेबस अभी कंप्लीट करने के लिए सिर्फ छ महीने हैं अभी दस महीने नहीं है अब सो हाउ डू वी ओवरकम दोज प्रेशर हाउ डू वी रिजिस्ट दोज प्रेशर आई वुड लाइक टू हियर फ्रॉम दी अदर पैनलिस प्रीता डॉक्टर मैथ्यू विजय मैम एनी ऑफ यू प्लीज गो अहेड विजय मैम वाई डोंट यू गो अहेड Yeah, I thought maybe Dr. Matthew would like to speak, so I was waiting. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. See, uh, it said that uh, success means only fifteen percentage of skills and knowledge, and eighty-five percentage of attitude and how you relate to others. This is what studies tell us. But as you rightly said. even in normal schools or any schools uh, they attach so much importance to academics the knowledge part even what knowledge part it's mugging up of facts in most of the cases so uh, uh, this pandemic has once again it uh, for me it it's a reminder that all of us have to work with our within the problems are not outside the problems are within us if uh, you know we saw the migrant laborers walking in the scorching sun with children for days together to reach their destination and on the other hand we saw a highly accomplished actor who had millions of followers on his um, you know twitter and um, it seems he used to spend 10 lakhs per month still he couldn't you know uh, uh, face or he couldn't uh, he succumbed to the vagaries of his mind and he committed suicide so this pandemic has is again once again reminding us we have to work from within so uh, to start with maybe the parents and the teachers have to uh, go for self care practices they have to strengthen their own inner being their own you know mental uh, wellness and uh, what uh, fatima was also saying and then they will be ready to you know take care of the children i feel so Mm, uh, I'm, I'm I'm just uh, what uh, what was your question? I if I just got no, no, yeah, I think you're you're touching the absolute yeah. critical point of how do we take care of ourselves? Um, mm. you know, in order to take care of children, to take care yeah. of anyone else. Okay, I want to touch on what are specific ways that educators, whether they're schools, uh, teachers, what are things that you can do to take care of this within? ourselves of teacher well being or counselor well being educator well being so uh, i uh, i i think see it's again very beautifully said every child needs a champion 
you know every child needs a champion to succeed in life whether in the form of a parent or a teacher i think in this uh, days the teachers role becomes more significant because parents are already going through a lots of pain and teachers are equipped with such sort of skills and knowledge to help these children so i think our uh, job becomes more important now how can we do that one practice which has uh, shown you know scientifically proven to which has some results in the physiological and psychological well being uh, in you know uh, reducing anxiety uh, you know depression etc one um, method is mindfulness practice maybe i think as parents and teachers we have to start with it and we have to uh, teach our children how to uh, practice it uh, helping them to be empathetic providing them opportunities at school and at home how to be empathetic with others you know two small small examples if you have a maid at home how can we be empathetic with that maid through you know your own role modeling makes a lot of difference and i think teachers and parents have to be real role models in the teaching them to be you know, take responsibility in, again in small small ways you know uh, bigger things it's difficult so start with small things where the children can be uh, inspired to take responsibility for their own self uh, depending upon his you know uh, disability and all i i have read somewhere that there is a lot of power in stories especially with smaller children they say stories are a powerful medium of uh, instilling Uh, you know uh, emo- uh, values and helping the children to understand their emotions etc somebody asked uh, albert einstein how can we make our children genius so he said tell them stories so they said yeah we will tell them stories more than that what should we do he said tell them more stories so that is the power of story so uh, the and then <coughs> in every school i think the school leader has a greater role to ensure that the teachers are working in a very happy environment their workload is reduced you know it should be justifiable and uh, they should be nourished you know through uh, everyday conversations or discussions dialogues how we can create a congenial atmosphere in the school so that the teachers can pass it uh, down to the children i think these are some of the things which are coming to my mind thank you thank you thank you dr matthew i see you nodding yeah. so um, yeah vandana i i just uh, thank you for this opportunity and a very good morning to all of you uh, what i thought is all my thoughts i have put it into a small presentation uh, it won't take care of maybe a, a maximum 10 minutes 10 minutes i want i will try to cut short it um, i since i am from the field of special education my focus is more of teaching and teacher and education so hope you will all understand um shall i share my uh, uh, can you just uh, uh, remove the disabled part for so that i can share my screen just give me a minute uh, dr i'm so sorry um in the meanwhile would you like to talk begin speaking through yeah uh, basically what uh, i always um, i am basically an optimist person so you know i i i always look uh, this covid as like you know as a challenge but i love to embrace that challenge i have to be uh, be like a, you got a scope for getting ready to deal with the cases because very often in, in the last 3 uh, months we have heard only the negative impacts of covid but let us look at what positive uh, things we got out of uh, covid i said uh, uh, for our, especially for our uh, disabled children you know it is a bonding between the parent and the child has uh, increased tremendously because i know that we all were like working parents now because of the lockdown the parents are there you know and they have the time to utilize and spend time with the children meaningfully so this is one blessing i thought second part is even the teachers are at your home through online media and i really appreciate our teachers who have taken very very sincere efforts in reaching out to our children during these pandemic times 
and that has also given uh, i'm talking about the hearing impaired hope you will uh, take in that context so the teachers have reached to the parents they were in constant touch with the children that has really helped these children uh, you know holding the hope that my teacher is there even when i am at home that is one spirit even the people got and also i feel the covid time has given us a lot of tools for uh, reaching out to the remote uh, you know areas because if you say that even today 450 participants along with us are interacting or discussing a, a, a important theme so this is possible just because of covid even earlier zoom was there webex was there we left it so what i always feel it like that take out the positive things in us take out the positive of what you can draw from this covid pandemic time utilize that time effectively and move ahead and always if you look at that the unicef has given us apart from the state and the central ministry helplines the unicef has come out with a very well sop on what the school should do what the teacher should do what the administrator should do what the parents should do it that is something uh, the sop is in front of you and it is very very simple and clear to implement there is no complication you don't require any any expertise in implementing and this is the time what i always feel we the teachers are if we are going to be united 100% i feel the magic will work on us i said why can't we in the special schools take up one see we have online classes every school is running online classes very sorry to state that you know the quality of uh, the classes which the teachers are taking you know i'm not quoting all teachers which a video was sent to me to review i was shocked i said is this the way we as teachers teaching because we the teachers need to understand the digital technology how we can utilize it is not just the mobile you hold record and send there are so many apps which can be easily downloadable your screens can be shared you can make wonderful lesson plans wonderful plans you can share it and if you share in that way it is obviously going to be beneficial otherwise just by recording and online teaching will not give quality education to our children we as teacher should always remember that we have 21st century uh, skills and demands which are lying on us we are not just because it is not literacy development we have all those demands you know the national demands the global demands are in place we need to cater to that so we need to improve so what we can do as in special schools what i personally feel it is we the principals of these schools should join hands and each school should offer that i can prepare my online lessons for class 1 students one school can take up for class 1 one. one school can take for class 2 like that way if you divide and you make your all your videos in the accessible format that is very important not especially i'm talking about the hearing impaired children not all can lip read you they can listen to you they need sign language version also they need captioning also what we can do it is we can do all those things so that a good accessible videos will be ready so that parents can utilize it the teachers can utilize it the family members can utilize it even the if it is interesting videos the children themselves will come up and they will open so that type of a contribution if we people during this lockdown if we can prepare it when our school opens we can give beautiful classes even that can be a resource at your classroom also and also outside the classroom that is a take away you know for children wherever they are like how parents are showing cartoons to the children what we can do it is these videos if it is interested obviously the children will start seeing because they can see their classmates they can see your friends that is very very essential so professional development is very important second part which i thought i will i'll share with you is the curriculum adaptation see in special schools particularly for children with hearing impairment we have been talking and we have been practicing 
you know, uh, the adaptations and accommodations in the curriculum for the hearing impaired children. So today, we always ought to remember that universal access is very important. So universal designs need to be developed. We can work again, I'm telling again, if we as experts feel if we can come together, obviously we can develop good curriculums, good adaptations can be prepared and sharing. We lack the, the sharing part. So I always feel it is, it is like, if you really want to address this issue and move ahead with your education, because education will not wait. If we want to move ahead, three things we need to do it is, we need to educate, engage, educate, and empower. So our teachers need to be techno savvy. We need to understand what COVID is there because there are a lot of myths. Even the teachers are carrying, even I am carrying. After going through all these official sites of WHO, UNICEF, state government, I started realizing, oh, this is a myth that I'm carrying. So think of the parents, what they are carrying. So it is our uh, um, uh, responsibility to give health education to the parents, to the children, small, small videos, small, small talks. There are so many uh, webinars happening on the mental health. We, that is a neglected area which we have been. So let us, you know, empower the parents, conduct small, small meetings, explain to them, utilize the resources which are already available. You go through your YouTubes, thousands of videos are available on COVID and this thing. But go to the, you know, I mean, authentic websites, learn it, share it. Then I feel that we will be able to work out. And the principles, because since I am also heading, we need to follow the guidelines of the government, but at the same time, take your parents in your hand, take your teachers in your team, take the corporate sector in your hand, take BMC in your hand, collaborate. I always recommend inter and intra collaborations, which are very, very essential. And because even schools alone cannot raise funds for sanitization. I will give you an example. One sanitization for me at my institute costs more than 35,000. Can the schools run by NGOs can afford this? How often they can do it? We need to have collaborations. And I'm sure that see, we work for a cause. We, the special educators, the rehabilitation professionals are working for a cause. We can convince because now, more, because very simple, I will share with you. I have in touch with a boy, an ICSE 10 standard boy, who has given me 600 transparent masks for my uh, clients here in the institute. He, is, he raised the 10 standard student, raised the fund, and he gave me. And if you see, he has given me acrylic shields. It is not the number, it is the contribution. So collaborations are very much essential. Otherwise, I am afraid whether my schools will be able to get ready to accept the children when the lockdown opens. You know, this is a big challenge. And, and, and I wanted to offer you is that my institute, we have the Department of Education and tomorrow onwards, we are starting with a virtual uh, technology use. You know, we have collaborated with, you know, so the special educators can get, you know, listen to those things, empower them. They can take the help of our department and whatever the help you require from my institute, I, we are ready to offer at any point of time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. You've touched on so many important things. One request, you've mentioned this UNICEF SOP. If you yes. have the link, can you yes. post it in the chat box? I think sure. people would be interested to, to read that. Sure. Um, as a resource. So again, just uh, any tools or resources you have that you think are useful for schools or educators, yes. please do post them in the chat box so people can walk away with material Absolutely. to read after Absolutely. this conversation. Absolutely. You touched on a lot of a lot of things um, that are fascinating. Um, I think this idea of you know what does it take to be a good teacher online is so is so important, right? I I can't just go and pretend like I'm on a blackboard behind me and my, my students are right in front of me. Um, so how do I engage 
and keep people interested in a conversation online. Um, and so, because the reality is, is that even when schools reopen, it won't reopen normally. All right. It will be like, ye bache ek din aate hain, dusre bache ye dusre din aate hain, or fir, you know, alternating days pe aate hain, ya alternating classes aate hain. So, online education will continue, right? And that leaves a question for what do we do for the children who don't have access? Um, I see some questions from our, our participants that if you don't have access to this technology, um, what do you do? Um, and how do we prepare our teachers for being effective in the classroom, in person, in school, as well as being effective um, you know, online or teaching uh, virtually? So I I'm, wanna turn to Faridza a little bit and talk to talk about specific strategies schools are using. You run a special school, the Save the Children India School um, in, in BKC in Mumbai. Um, can you share a little bit about what STCI is doing to prepare its educators for, for returning to school? Thank you, Vandana. Uh, to start with, you know, the first thing I would like to add to the C's that we have been talking about, and I think what we need is we need to put peace and compassion, you know, much, much ahead of any decisions that we make, you know, be it remote learning for children or bringing them to school or teacher training or whatever we are doing, we need to put these two factors really ahead of whatever decisions that we are making. The care, the compassion is something that we need to look for because these children have had a devastating effect, you know. One, because as Dr. Uh, you know, uh, Avinash put it, that, you know, they, near, they were so used to the structure, to the learning environment, you know. So eventually, even if when they are returning back to school, what they will need is they will need to be, you know, uh, bringing them back, you know, to that uh, learning levels or the motivation level or the progress that they have made. We will need a lot of empathy, a lot of compassion, a lot of care, a lot of love that the teachers will need to do. Uh, having said that, you know, there, there, uh, you know, to take on from this and also to take on from where Vijayam uh, ma'am had said something, champions, they look at teachers as a champions. You know, so uh, what I have, like as a school, what plans we have for future, you know, are very simple. One that I've been talking to my teachers is that, you know, once they come back, the continuity of that child with the same teacher. We should have that familiar teacher with them once they are back because, you know, one, they had their rapport. Two, when they come back, they're, co they're coming back with, we don't know so much of stigma or discrimination or some kind of, you know, abuse or what maltreatment. So we need to have that familiar face to make them comfortable in school. Uh, the other thing that we have been doing, and I think that has stood us in good times, you know, today, we were always, you know, connected with our parent groups through WhatsApp. I think for about uh, more than two, three years, you know, we have had these groups and we have been connected with them. We have been sending them lessons and, you know, teachers have been in touch with them. And that saw us really good in these crisis time because all through, you know, the uh, lockdown period, the teachers have been in, in touch with the parents. And, you know, uh, what we want to take this, you know, further on with our teachers is to keep, you know, that contact, that connect, even with the children who are not going to return to school. So that, you know, we keep a check on them, you know, we uh, also um, uh, kind of keep supporting them, even if they are not returning back to school. So this is something uh, that, you know, we surely have enough plans when we open up. Thought, uh, I think what we need to do is, you know, have some kind of a curricula which, you know, uh, uh, Matthews or Dr. Matthews was so speaking about, is to build a, a curriculum uh, which is based, of course, on the social emotional learning and all that we all are talking about. But it needs to be project based. It needs to be where children are involved in doing something so that they feel nice when they return back. If we are going to sit back and just try and finish what we need to finish that is really not going to happen we need to be innovative and i think this crisis have thrown to us you know a lot of time to introspect to innovate and to think what we had not done earlier 
you know, to learn from our past experiences and draw from there what we have missed with this children. Probably we have missed that opportunity for them to express themselves. You know, so that I think is, is going to become a very, very important aspect when we are designing what we are going to do next. And uh, I think we also need, you know, a collective response to what we are doing. And uh, we as an organization, since you have asked me what we are doing, we as an organization have been, you know, doing this, you know, uh, uh, very much that, you know, we're staying connected with the people in the sector. We are sharing with them what we are doing and we'll continue to do that. We need to have responses from, uh, you know, other uh, professionals so that we have assistive therapies for our children. We need to connect well with the teachers parents. So this connective response, you know, Vandana is going to be very, very important to move ahead because what others are doing, we need to, you know, take from them, learn from them and possibly have a tailored intervention, which is more school and student specific, which will really make, you know, our children, whether it's remote learning or coming back to school, meaningful one day. Thank you. A few really great ideas, simple ideas um, that you've mentioned that I think are very easy for all educators to implement. One is thinking about continuity of teachers, um, whether it's with um, children with disabilities or not. I think um, that emotional stability that would be there when they return to school of seeing the same face again in their classroom is a, is a wonderful idea. Simple WhatsApp groups of parents in each classroom. If they don't have WhatsApp, if they only have a simple analog device, um, mobile device, then you call them um, and make everyone responsible for, for calling a set of parents so that everyone is in touch. Um, the biggest risk right now is of children leaving our school system and not returning, especially marginalized children. So how do we keep them engaged with their, with their education um, in, this, in this time? especially emotionally connected to, to all of us. So I think you've touched, touched on that. I think both you and um, Dr. Matthew have touched on this, this issue of collaboration, right? So whether it's a group of special schools uh, collaborating or any schools collaborating and saying, I will handle this subject or this grade or this activity, because the beauty of Zoom or, or, or these online platforms is right now we have a classroom of 381 people. Right. And so you can actually think about reaching much greater numbers, you know, with the same amount of resources. So I wanted to um, talk a little bit about what kind of collaboration is possible um, in this space and specific ideas um, for how people can collaborate with other teachers. Um, I'm also getting some questions about um, how to complete, uh, how to shorten the curriculum or, or the syllabus. Uh, given that we'll go back to school, what kind of pressures may be there for exams. Um, if children don't have devices or children with disabilities who struggle to engage with the device or technology, um, what are some solutions for that as well? So, so some very specific questions from our audience um, and happy for you to answer any of those that, that strike you. Um, I can uh, go back to you, uh, Fatima, ma'am, if you, ma'am, if you have anything um, you'd like to add on any of these these questions. You're on mute, ma'am. Yeah, I I strongly feel. Can you hear me now? Yes. I feel for this academic year. Let's keep the academics at the back burner. That should not be a priority as of now. Okay. So anybody asking me how do we complete the curriculum or the portion and all, I, I just don't want to attend that question because I want people to think about, I mean, this is an opportunity as Dr. Matthew says, rethink education. Rethink education. What are your priorities? Academic is one aspect of education. It's not a complete education. Education is much broader than academics is. So this year, at least, I would say for every time, but this year, at least, let's put academics at the back burner and let's focus on social, emotional well-being. Yeah. And for that, we have to do a lot of professional development for our teachers as well. 
yes it's very nice teachers as champions and heroes and wall we know the reality we know we ha have all sort of teachers teachers also going through some emotional pr problems crisis and some people are just not able to get that kind of connectivity with the children they are not able to empathize it's not a very major and important component in any of the b ed courses and here we are not talking about b ed and special education i'm talking in general the mainstream schools the kind of teachers we get so a lot of preparedness on the part of teacher is needed before we reopen so maybe it's a good idea to start online courses for our teachers how to prepare themselves for reopening so when you reopen you are in a better position to get that kind of connectivity and farida spoke very nicely about the collective response so we have to be together on the same page parents teachers management everybody and everybody should be of the opinion that academic goes at the back burner and this year we are going to touch only on the emotional social well being most because i strongly feel as a psychologist when children feel good they behave good and then they can learn better yeah so that's your priority uh anyone dr matthew i see you nodding uh, would you like yeah. to uh, yeah. uh see i just wanted to share to information the the ministry of social justice and empowerment is going to come up with a national mental helpline which the a uh, group of uh, psychologists uh, you know the special educators like a, um, a counseling team you know have been identified from different parts of the country and uh, they will be giving uh, services so i think uh, this week or sorry next week i most probably the launch will be there the minister and then i think we can utilize that services you know uh, for all our special children because the this helpline is specially for persons with disabilities that's a wonderful resource um to be i will share the 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 toll free number uh, to farida i think uh, once it is uh, inaugurated farida you wanted to say something go ahead yes you know uh, when uh, uh, fatima was uh, speaking about how we need to put the curriculum at the back burner what what came to my mind and what i feel strongly feel is you know uh, when we talk about you know children with disability we keep talking about making them functional 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 in the in the society but you know what we need to now look at and change our focus from making them from you know just saying that we want to them to be functional we need to prepare them and we need to make them participative with their parents so this participative thing also needs to come in whether it is from parent side teacher side community side you know so we need to look at from a holistic point of view not just as a child being functional in the society a child being participative well prepared going back to the society so i i thought you know this this just crossed my mind and i i've been thinking on this i thought i might share it with you guys what are some of the so i think the, the this issue about completing the syllabus some some people are worried because you know we can feel that it's not important right now but what if the government says that you have to sit for these exams or you know you have to anyways complete the syllabus in the year and that pressure comes uh, what do we do in that situation is there are there efforts being made um you know i know that for this current you know previous academic year the current examinations are being canceled in some cases being postponed in some cases um but what are we looking at do we do, do any of you know um and how do we prepare ourselves for that um please miss fatima go ahead and and love to hear from yeah, any so, of the other yeah. yeah so i feel now the civil society has to take a stand and i don't think any such kind of insensitive gr will come but if it had comes the civil society has to take a stand and talk about it that this year we are not going to focus on academics i mean yes of course it is important but we will not be in a rush to complete the curriculum not at the cost of emotional and social well being and i'm yeah. happy because i keep reading now okay, you know 10th standard exams are not happening 12th standard cbse has said that based on the previous year's uh, performance they are going to give the average marks and all so people are not insensitive probably they don't know better so if they don't know better the professional bodies or the civil society should take a stand this is the time when collective response is very very needed let's take a stand together very very forcefully and say what is the priority so that's what yeah. i keep saying we think education this year yeah thank you uh vijay ma'am or dr matthew do you yeah. have any views on the yeah please go ahead 
Yeah, even uh, even I do agree that you know academic should not be the focus. You know, at least this next six months, the focus should be. Uh, I we should take that six months as a preparation time for all of us, the professionals, the children, the parents, to face the future challenges. You know, utilize the technology, move ahead, and be fit mentally. Health, the mental health of each and every. Every one is important. So I feel we should take this six months, develop special curriculars, modules like how uh, WHO has come up there with their online modules. I think we for rehab professionals also such modules should come for parents, children, and us so that we all should be ready. You know, this adversity we never expected. It came. It was like you know, it was a fall. Same way yeah. should not happen in future. so we should be prepared and this six months i feel uh, you know we should be working on uh, the mental health and mental well being of uh, our people so i always feel like it might be stormy now but the rain does not last forever mm -hmm. so i i feel that we have to have this hope and we need to prepare and together we all can uh, get through this uh, challenge that's beautiful That's a beautiful quote, and I love uh, your focus on seeing the opportunity and optimism. I think in what we can learn from this, I think that's so critical to our mental health. Also, um, to focus on what we can learn and um, what we are learning from this experience. Um, uh, so I'm getting a few questions from the audience, and I want to make sure that we're we're addressing some of these. Um, I'm, I've gotten a question. I'll just read it directly. Parents of children with special needs are often hesitant. uh does the panel have any suggestions on how to approach them so i think at the beginning of our conversation we started talking about um how much expectation has changed of parents in these past months right parents have become caregivers teachers counselors uh you know cooks everything um the parents are doing so it's a lot of responsibility um for any of us but especially for um parents who may have anyways been struggling um and with for parents with uh uh children with disabilities or special needs obviously um the challenges they face are even greater um especially if they are not fully aware um or knowledgeable about some of these issues so what suggestions do we have um to support parents um to make them comfortable to approach the school to be a part of that community any specific examples that we can give um to strengthen that relationship go ahead ma'am yeah. pati ma'am so you know when i worked in mainstream schools all my schools are mainstream schools all colleges and schools and uh, we do have inclusion and we have all kind of disability children coming to our school what we don't understand the kind of emotions parents go through sometimes we feel that parents don't understand we make a judgement on parents but that's such a insensitive approach on our part consider us having a child with disability you know when i break the news to parents especially with a hidden disability which are not visible which are not physical first mode is denial then guilt then a lot of anger and resentment i have seen parents spanking and beating their children in the privacy of bathroom I mean, they are so frustrated that मेरे पास ये ऐसा बच्चा क्यों है? Not because they hate their children, but they also are human beings. They go through so much emotional trauma, emotional problems, society stigma, and all that. So we have to take care of parents' vulnerability, parents' emotional um, trauma, or whatever, and communication. You know, whenever I have broken the news to parents that आपके बच्चे का ये problem है ऐसा है तो कितनी बार ऐसा हुआ है कि parents get very angry, they bang the door and they go away. But ultimately, when you are, you know, you have compassion. But Farida spoke a lot about care and compassion. वो दो चीजें. These are the mantras. These are the magic words. So if you have those two words with you, and when parents realize that what you are telling them is out of love and compassion and care for the child. she saying that because she cares for the child my, my child parents ultimately come back but yeah. don't pass any judgment on parents don't tell them that you are insensitive you don't care for your parents parents se zyada bachcho ka care kon kar sakta hai 
but it's not easy for a parent to have a child with disability so please understand the parents trauma also and address that trauma and those emotional range also and please yeah. address this they, that first before you start addressing that child issues and concerns I think it's a beautiful opportunity to to strengthen this relationship, right? One, that, yeah. yeah. Vandana, I I I strongly feel that bonding is very essential. The, because as against the mainstream schools, see, uh, our classrooms have six to seven children. The I know comparatively, we the teachers can reach out to the parents, you know, in in, in a very close to manner. and very close frequent contacts can be and once the teachers gives a patient listening to the parents you know and parents when they feel that the teacher is for me and my child you know all their frustrations will get slowly vanished and we can mold them in the way how we want it for you know for the empowerment of their child so i basically feel the bonding between the teacher parent and the child and you know the school community will help us to solve many of the parents and if there is a will there is a way i strongly believe in that and i'm sure that if we reach out if we reach out to them rather than they reaching out to us i think this bond will get strengthened day by day and we will be able to solve the parents issues yeah i have another question about i have lots of questions about children um from poor families um about technology or about um access to therapy access to counseling so what are the tools that we have available to us if if schools don't have counselors if um you know educators of uh poor children don't have those skills what are the tools that are available um to provide that kind of therapy um to to children that we can offer the the group Uh, can i add something uh, not to this question the one which we were discussing can i shall i uh, please yeah so uh, when we uh, i was listening to fatima and uh, dr matthew i was thinking even in normal schools it's so important for parents and schools to partner and parent and teacher and child have to have a uh, you know bond and uh, studies a lot of research shows that when the teacher student relationship is strong the children start uh, you know uh, performing well not only in academics but also in their behavior so there is already a lot of studies which uh, shows the importance of um, having a uh, great rapport between school and uh, parents and uh, between teacher and students and as you rightly said when you have got six or seven uh, students in a class it's so easy to bond and now this is one pandemic we have seen we don't know what is stored for us in the you know in future so i think th this is the time for us to teach our children resilience how to face challenges how to you know accept uh, uh, situations more than the child i think in these schools parents because parents are again uh, i would like to repeat that already struggling but fatima was sharing that i'm uh, not able to accept it and then plus to add to it this worry is about their own children's future so what best we can do and i again i go back to say the teachers responsibility here increases because we have to educate the parents before educating the child get them on board and then do it so i just wanted to share this with you yeah. maybe the next question maybe fatima will be a better person to answer because i i don't work with any yeah. school assets yeah. now so uh, yeah but you know yeah this is a very major major issue that in the poor socio economic group therapies are so very costly i mean it comes with a price tag so what do we do with the children and dr matthew has spoken about collaboration i do it in a big way i mean it's not that that our schools are located at the poor socio economic group but we do have some children who are not able to afford it so whenever i have got hearing impaired children where i have some issues and all ali our institute are always very very happy to help me i've got a very very positive experience from them all my blind children now the saint xavier's institute those girls they are too happy to make my audio books they are too happy to make my topo maps on the three dimensions you have to just tell them and they do it for you 
So you have to look for resources which are available outside and collaborate and make partnership with them. You yeah. can't expect your teachers to know everything, and especially in a mainstream school, you cannot expect that. But you can actually take help from these people, and people are very, very ready, eagerly ready to help us. But we need to find out the resources, maintain a diary of all those resources where I can send for my therapies to my children and all, and use sensitivity in the classroom also. I want to talk I'm about one cerebral palsy child in my school, coming from a low socio-economic group. and it was told that because his speech was also not clear so the doctor told us that if he has got a tailor made customized wheelchair when he is able to sit erect and the pipe is like you know in a proper position yeah so his speech will improve and when we figure out the wheelchair it was costing around 50 60000 which parents could not afford so i just had a small talk with the class i said your child, your classmate is suffering and he needs this chair are you ready to help believe me all the divisions together of that particular fifth standard put raise more than the cost of the wheelchair i'm not happy about the fund raising i'm also happy about the sensitivity the empathy the kind of care and compassion they show you have to take when there is a will she said very nicely when there is a will you can do lot of so you have to have this class school environment your school climate has to be friendly with inclusion and with you know social emotional well being the focus should be there when your focus is there when it is included in the school ethos things automatically happen uh vandana uh, i thought uh, i mean so since uh, uh, ma uh, ali awarding is a uh, uh, i mean a government institution we generally uh, give the service almost free of cost and uh, we have the department of psychology which is uh, right now also in our website is given on the photo gallery that they are ready to give online uh, psychological you know counseling and guidance to uh, any of the needy people even for speech therapy also the department can support you if you have if the schools have any any uh, such uh, requirement and they wanted to uh, um, access our service we are uh, very open to all these suggestions ultimately we wanted to reach out to you all though we do not have a school but we understand the concerns of each and every special school and every special educator who is participating in this seminar so whichever the way you want it i am very sure i can uh, give the support through webinars i can em we can empower the teachers or we can um, you know give training to the parents or whichever the way you want to collaborate with us we are ready all my department of uh, speech and language pathology and the department of psychology even department of education all the departments can uh, support you in this endeavor thank you i'm getting to i said the... that vandana i just like yes, to uh, just make a point over here uh, like uh, dr nathya has mentioned that you know they are happy to you know support and collaborate and uh, so also you know at um, stci whenever we have got such request even if we can't support them you know uh, we don't have the mandate or we don't have the you know resource what we do is that we know a lot of people who would be able to you know uh, help them or we know certain organizations so you know uh, on behalf of stci i think we do a lot of that and i would like to you know put it over here that you know they can always yes. get in touch with us and you know because we are in this you know sector we know people and we can always give referrals and we can send them. i think if you um so we have the last 7 minutes um a couple of things just um so we wrap up on time one is i think uh, for those of you who have panelists who have uh, resources who are you know happy for people to reach out to you directly or have someone in the organization um who they can re reach out to if you can put the contact information or or details whether it's a website email address whatever it may be in the chat box for everyone um i think there's a lot of very specific questions that people have for all of you um based on things that that you've said or mentioned um and i think that there's a lot of interest in in kind of following up um with specific questions to to their context um but i want to give everyone you know just one more minute i think uh to make some closing remarks we have 360 participants um with us still um so one of the things i'm taking away from this conversation is you know before we were on autopilot i would say before covid we woke up you go through the routines of going to work going to school 
doing your teaching, doing your job, coming home, going to eating dinner, going to sleep. Now what is being demanded of us, all of us, is much greater than what we're used to. You know, we're being asked to take initiative, we're being asked to be creative, to be innovative, um, to, to take responsibility for much more than we're used to taking responsibility for. Be it a parent, be it a school, be it a teacher, be it a counselor, um, you know, be it a student themselves. And so, um, so I think that that is an, a tremendous positive opportunity for us as human beings um, to take that kind of responsibility and um, to grow, but it presents these challenges in that process, right? These, these mental health challenges, the, the trauma, um, the struggle in that growth. Um, so, so I want you to all leave you know, our, our group of participants who have been here for so long to just with, with a few closing thoughts, ideas um, that you want them to, to leave the session with. Um, Dr. Matthew, please go ahead. Um, uh, see, I, I, I basically uh, feel that, um, see, we need to have three things in, uh, in our mind when we are going to work uh, or in a plan, any, any of the services for our children, whether it is at school, at home, uh, or any other place where they are. The first part is we need to engage them, we need to educate them, we need to empower them. And uh, these E3s, I think uh, uh, we have to work out uh, in all, because since I'm in special education talking, we should uh, adapt or accommodate our learning environments. We should have professional development. We should also look forward for the universal curriculum and uh, differentiated instructions, which can be. And also, we also need to look forward for some innovations in our assessments. But remember that the standards need not be uh, compromised. But at least this six months, let us focus on uh, the mental health of our teachers, children, parents, and all those who are involved with us collaborate in whichever the way we can do it, uh, reach out to people, ask for support, so resources are available, tap it, and I think we will be able to achieve, uh, 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 you know, we will be able to uh, overcome these challenges and move ahead for a, a looking forward for a new horizon. That is what, again, I, I repeat uh, that quote, it might be stormy now, but the rain does not last forever. Keep faith and uh, let us work together in one way, with one goal. Thank you. Vijay, uh, ma'am? I, I hope and pray that more schools come forward uh, you know, uh, and with an inclusion policy. Uh, way back in the 90s when inclusion was not the buzzword, uh, as a principal of a school, I had attend, uh, admitted a few students with disabilities with uh, phys uh, physical plus mental, one child was visually impaired, but I had just uh, admitted them out of compassion. But what uh, changes it brought to the culture of the school was something which I never expected. My children became more compassionate. Their classmates mates used to stand at the gate to receive them, to take them to their class. There, you know, everyone was, nobody asked them to do anything. Children are, there is so much of innate goodness in everyone. So I realized, you know, uh, in, an inclusive policy for a school can um, change the educational experiences of the students. It can instill empathy, compassion, a lot of uh, the 21st century skills we talk about. So, plus, if every school keeps, I'm not only talking about, um, you know, uh, I'm talking about all sorts of uh, disabilities. So, if every school has one main agenda point in their, uh, this thing, uh, in their meetings, how to have a more inclusive policy for our school? I'm sure the culture of the schools will change and our children also, their attitudes and values will change and we will have a better, you know, uh, we will have a generation of youngsters equipped with more empathy and compassion coming out of our schools. This is my prayer and wish. Thank you. That's a beautiful message. Thank you. Fatima, ma'am? Yeah, so, Vandana, I would like to share an anecdote, my personal story. So, when I thought of starting my career, 
I have done my MPhil and MA in clinical psychology from Bombay University. So I started a clinic, and I live in an area which is a very upcoming area, Lokhanwala. So you know all those, and it's it's very fashionable to go to a shrink's office and talk about you know, what kind of thing. So believe me, my clinic was doing very well, and it was a very flourishing practice, and I was very happy. But it so happened then slowly I started getting a lot of younger people coming to my clinic. for various reason for pathological lying for addiction for uh, aggression for anger management for depression suicidal tendency academic problems and all and that sets you thinking i mean you get that inner call inside that you know what are you doing and that that us din maine ye socha ke isn't it better to do something preventive than remedial because no matter how good you are when you do something remediation personality mein dikh jata hai so you do something preventive so young children don't end up in a shrink's room and when you decide to do something preventive the best place is schools educational institutions the bestest intervention points available in the entire world is our schools we can do so much and that brought me to the school setup so i locked my clinic and i came to school setup and i'm still here and i i really believe that teachers have got that magic wand and they can really touch lives and they can make a frog a prince but i'm also afraid with a bad touch they can also turn a prince into a frog so i emphasize a lot on the professional development of teachers realize the kind of opportunities and the blessings you have to teach children to be the better human being so my focus is entirely on the x factor in education the social emotional well being because we are creating nations in our classrooms we are making a new world in our classroom and we should understand that and we should focus on those areas so i want all of us all educators or professionals or mental health people to focus on that because when the child is happy emotionally physically socially perfect condition mein hai academics happen yeah thank you very beautifully said thank you for sharing that farida last um thank you many thanks to stci for coming on the chat um for organizing this so thank you for your leadership uh frida um in um you know organizing our group of amazing panelists um and would love to hear some closing thoughts from you and and perhaps how stci can continue to be a support um to educators going forward um so you know uh, i feel you know this entire the crisis has a uh, kind of provided all of us with such a wonderful opportunity you know taking on on a very positive note that uh, dr matthews has been maintaining since uh, since the time of start so this this i think you know has given us an opportunity to to make um, uh, you know education for children with disability more accessible you know more inclusive uh, more participative more uh, you know uh, on a common platform if we all can come and you know do something that gives us a very long standing long you know long term solutions to some of the you know issues that individually we as organizations are facing you know and um, on behalf of sbci what i would like to say here uh, is that you know we are always open to collaborate to connect to network to you know try out you know something that will be beneficial for all the children and you know of course to the families to parents to the caregivers you know we want to reach out to them uh, not to leave out you know the teachers you know so whatever we have been doing with our teachers the kind of trainings the kind of you know um, uh, interactive sessions or the kind of you know we have something called you know every friday that our ceo you know meets up with everyone and we just have 10 minutes of just sharing and things like that you know something like that that brings so close and we are happy to share all those all those things that people want and again to leave uh, you know before leaving this platform i would say the word today you know again comes from you know collaborative work that we need to do in this field if we really need to make a difference here and that's what i think we all have gathered here today for thanks thanks for reading that havobi do you want to say a closing remark and then we'll we'll close the session thanks everyone so much yeah thank you i think uh, we actually have received so many questions this past one and a half hours and such meaningful questions and i was thinking it's always so different 
to hear people who are practitioners uh, you know speak it's so so real it has been such a real session there have been so many very clear directions i think for us as a, as an organization and i'm sure for many other institutions um i think uh, the biggest thing i'm taking out of this conversation is the need for compassion at all levels uh, and i'm uh, so pleased that almost uniformly all of us feel <laughs> that this is the year that we focus on children as children you know and don't don't stress about the academics so i'm going to tell you the questions gave that came through it's showing that many teachers are really concerned that while we are saying this now in a month or two or in six months you know in december the pressure will be back on them to complete a syllabus so perhaps that does need a little bit of coming together uh, you know and a little bit of advocacy to be clear about it from the top down uh, but uh, we are very happy to have had everyone here we are very happy we now have 332 participants but they've just been dropping out in the last 5 or 10 minutes we've had 388 participants um and we thank everyone for coming on board and spending one and a half hours on this uh, and a particular thanks to vandana for hosting this and bringing this you know this really integrated easy conversation together on such a tough topic um yeah so that's all from uh, from me thank you thank you thank you bye everyone have bye. a wonderful day take care Right. Thank you. Thank you, Fatima, Vijayam, Dr. Matthews. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you very, very much, Vandana. Vandana's call. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Amri. Thank, Thank you. Farida, I'm very proud of you. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> I'll connect with you, Fatima. <laughs>